Hi everybody, Jim Graham here for MMA World, uh, going live once again uh, for another interview. And this time around, I'm going to be having another fighter from the Ultimate Fighter 26 finale, this being uh, Ryan Janes. And he's going to come on to talk about that win that he had over Andrew Sanchez last weekend in Las Vegas. Um, and we're about to get him now on as I'm messaging him right now to come on and join the video. For those of you who don't know uh, who Ryan James is, uh, he has fought in the UFC. This is now his uh, fourth UFC fight, his first victory since his UFC debut, uh, which was just about a year ago in December of 2016, where he defeated Keith Burrish. He then fought uh, Gerald Mieshart, as well as Jack Marshman, uh, coming up short in those two bouts. Uh, but bounce back here with this win uh, over Andrew Sanchez at the Ultimate Fighter 26 finale. So we're going to get him on to talk about that. And again, uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, for Ryan, please comment down below and we'll get to them uh, as soon as we can. And we're happy to have uh, Ryan come on the broadcast. Really excited uh, to talk with him and see what, uh, what he thought about his victory there uh, last weekend. as we're trying to get him uh, alive here. Once again, uh, I'm your host, Jim Graham. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, and, oh. We're working to get him on here. He's, I think, watching um, the video here live. Okay. All right. I'm sending Ryan an invite. Uh, we'll talk about uh, his latest win here. And thanks for everybody for tuning in here on MMA World. Right, we're sending the invite to you right now, Ryan. Just remember to turn your phone sideways to accept the uh, invite. All right, I'm going to try sending you another invite here, Ryan. Um, so I'm sending it, to, uh, sending it to you right now. And again, just remember to turn your phone sideways, and we'll get you on the broadcast here to talk to everybody. Once again, I'm your host, Jim Graham. Thanks, for everybody, for tuning in live here on MMA World. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Jim Graham. It's just my name, J-I-M-G-R-A-M-M. And also, uh, if you would like to follow Ryan on Twitter, it's Ryan Jane's MMA on Twitter as well. See what he's up to. All right. All right, I'm going to no answer from the video guest. So, Ryan, if you're watching here, uh, I'm sending the, the invite to your phone. Um, just make sure to have the phone turned sideways to click accept, and then you can uh, join on. So I'm going to resend it here, resending it right now.
So right now it is sending. And we'll get you on here. Okay. All right, looks like Ryan's having some problems with his phone. So give us one second here. All right. Okay. Um. Oh, there you are. There you are. How's it going, Ryan? Good. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries at all. Uh, everybody, this is Ryan James, fresh off his victory over Andrew Sanchez uh, last Friday. So how are you doing this afternoon, Ryan? Uh, I'm doing great, thank you. It's 9 a.m. where I'm from right now, so I just woke up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, I know uh, that's in uh, British Columbia, Canada, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Have you guys had snow there yet? We had a little snow flurry here in Detroit uh, yesterday, so I didn't know if you guys got snow yet. Uh, no snow. No, no. Okay. We generally don't get much snow up here in Victoria. Okay. All right. Well, uh, everybody, once again, Ryan James, you can follow him on Twitter at Ryan James MMA. Let's get right to it, Ryan, here with your fight against Andrew Sanchez. Um, I guess the question I have to ask is, DC seemed convinced, Daniel Cormier convinced that you were hurt in this fight. Now that it's a couple days afterwards, uh, were you hurt in this fight or um, do you seem okay now? Uh, it was, I, I think Cormier called it okay for sure. Um, the, the funny thing about that was uh, I thought he took me down. Like I wasn't out of it. Just I just didn't know he punched me. I, when I was down, I was like, oh, he took me down. So now I have to get back up. Right. Yeah. So this is that moment of time is, is, is gone. But for the most part, I was okay immediately after. Right. Well, that's good. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously you had to go through, you know, health protocols and stuff. And so you were checked out, you know, clean bill of, bill of health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I only got the, what, three day suspension due to tough fight. So that's not bad considering. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It, it, I mean, maybe the suspension should be a bit more. I mean, I don't want to take my time, take a break, enjoy Christmas, and then and then think about what's next. But yeah, that was a little rough. So obviously, that's not the way you would ideally like to start a fight. Obviously, but in the second round, you started to kind of get your feet back under you. You could tell that Sanchez was starting to kind of wear down from not finishing you. And I have the I have the fight metric stats in, in front of me here. You actually outstruck. I don't know if you knew this. 120 to 40 and landed strikes uh, <laughs> in the round just to show kind of the comeback there. Um, I think that's a pretty incredible comeback. And did you feel like the tide was starting to turn more and more as that second round, uh, you know, got towards the the final horn there? Yeah, even in the in the first, I started to really start pushing them back. Um... And, I mean, that was kind of the plan at the get-go, keep that pressure on. I just kind of had that lapse in the first. And then in the second, just – it was just more about being fast than being necessarily trying to swing his head off. So that's all it was, was just keep that volume up. And then in the third round, obviously, he seemed completely gone. Um, the final numbers in terms of Atlanta strikes, 30-1 to 1 in favor of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some incredible shots to the body, which I think even added uh, to, you know, to his conditioning problems uh, in that uh, fight. And then you finally got the finish there. Have you ever been in a fight where you had to make such a dramatic comeback before? Um, I've never been hurt that bad before in a fight, but the first round for me is always a rough round. I, it takes me one round of getting kind of beat up a little bit before I can, before I really kind of get started. I mean, I've had a lot of fights where just like, okay, that first round you lost, please don't do that to us again. And then I just, the second I win or, or I, the third one I win. I mean, even in the Marshman fight by the third round, I was starting to take over. Now kind of looking at that fight, the, the Marshman fight, your last fight compared to this, obviously you did get a win, but you know, how do you feel that you changed from that fight uh, against Jack to this fight against, you know, Andrew Sanchez? Um, I think I learned to read the fight 
during the fight better. I mean, I, there was a point in the Marshman fight in the second round where if I had to put the pedal on, I would have either gotten the decision or definitely got that win. And I remember that point ever so clearly. And uh, my coaches were like, now you know, you've learned a lot from that. So it was just more like knowing when to put that pedal down and go and reading it then. I mean, it was pretty obvious with this fight because after his first onslaught, he was physically and mentally too exhausted to keep pushing at me. So I knew in the first round and then going into the second, I had my coaches say, okay, just keep it, keep it on. Don't get hit like that again, but just keep it turned on. So it was a little easier in this fight, but I think coming out of the Martian fight, that's what I took out the most, being able to kind of go, oh, now it's the time to really put it on him. Now, in the course of this fight against Andrew Sanchez, obviously – when a guy, you know, puts that many strikes on you, it doesn't finish. Not only could you tell physically, but was he saying anything verbally? Was he like, man, why wouldn't you go down? Did you hear anything <laughs> that? Or, or was it just simply you could just tell him, you know, was it just a physical thing? It was just a physical thing. You mean, you, you can really tell when someone, um, someone isn't really kind of physically there. I Like, basically, they break. And... And uh, normally in my previous fights, when I see a person break, it's either due to a direct strike or, or, a, uh, or I'm clinching with somebody, feel them, kind of the body gives up. <clears throat> but with Sanchez, it was like you can just see it. It was very obvious that he just kind of broke and he was done at that point. Uh, we're going to go to a couple of the comments uh, we have down here in the video. Um, we have a question from Peter. What's – would this fight or another one be you uh, would characterize as your toughest fight? Uh, I I mean it's easy to, in retrospect it would be this fight. I mean I've never been I've never been dropped before my career as of now, and I fought big punches before. So the fact that I actually had to come back from that was pretty huge. And I mean I've never fought that caliber of wrestler before. I mean Andrew Sanchez skill wise was was very different than i'm used to so it was everything was hard about this fight and he's from a good camp i mean we know the syndicate mma and john wood and them so we, we knew he was he was going to be coming trained hard and well and a good skill set so that would be my hardest fight i mean jiu-jitsu guys striking guys i don't know i they send they for me I'm more comfortable with than necessarily like the wrestlers who's just willing to like wrestle you down the whole time. And I think that was one thing I I believe they were saying on the broadcast and one thing I thought was the fact he is more of a wrestler, the fact he was hitting you with strikes, that's probably one of the reasons why he gassed out because that's not something his body is used to. If he was just trying to out wrestle you, he probably would have been able to go. But I think that striking, you know, that that mix of doing all the strike, I think kinda hurt him a little bit, at least in my oh. opinion. I don't think so. I think they were worried about his uh, his gas with the takedowns. You know, I think I th I think that they were worried. It's either he was going to struggle wrestling with me or struggle punching me. So it was one or the other. And uh, I figure he's a you know big guy, powerful guy. I figure they can do more with the strikes than they could with the wrestling. I would, I, it seemed like, I mean, I was going to keep getting up no matter how many times it took me down. And if he took me down six times in round one, I was going to get up seven and he was still going to be exhausted. And then he wasn't going to be able to take me down in round two. So I think they kind of had that in the back of the head. I'm a hard guy to keep down. Now, one thing, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what you used in your preparation, but obviously he had a fight with uh, Anthony Smith, who much like you is a taller and, and longer 185. Was that a fight when you were kind of breaking down Andrew Sanchez? You kind of looked at and go, well, this is what Anthony Smith was able to do to be successful. Maybe I can kind of do something like that. Uh, yeah, a little. I mean, when you fight someone like uh, Sanchez, you got to really get your kind of wrestling up. I think Andrew uh, Anthony Smith beat Sanchez due to his pure toughness. I mean, he was even losing the third round until he pushed back. So, I mean, he was just a tough dude, and I think uh, Andrew just – that just shows you, like, Andrew gassed in that fight even though he was wrestling almost the whole time. So it's kind of – his his cardio is kind of his, his Achilles heel. It was, you kind of got to 
fix. Uh, we got a question here, going back to some of the comments uh, from James. If you were to play matchmaker, who would you want to fight next? Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a few guys. I mean, I know Michael Bisping is looking for a, uh, a retirement fight. That'd be fun. I mean, to kind of do that. Um, yeah, but I mean, beyond, beyond that, because I know that one's coming up pretty soon, beyond that fight, I haven't really overthought it. It's just Christmas. I'm just trying to get settled away at home. I mean, I don't know if you heard, but my, uh, my partner's pregnant, so it's kind of, uh, kind of settling that. For sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to throw out a name just, just thinking when that question came up. Um, what about someone like Sam Alvey? <laughs> that that would also be fun too yeah i mean there's a lot of good guys in the division who'd be fun i mean that's the one that's the one my uh my manager keeps wanting me to fight too yeah i mean i don't know all right um let's see i want to there's a question i want to ask you and this is one of the reasons i became a fan of you during your last fight i, th I think it was dan hardy um and john on the broadcast and they were saying that you are a big fan of board games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am also a huge fan of board games, in addition to obviously loving martial arts. So uh, for a few minutes, I wanted to ask you a couple board game questions. Let's do it. Uh, yes, um, finally. Yeah. My time to shine. <laughs> so if anyone uh, has to tune out for a couple seconds, that's fine. But um, I love talking about board games. But what, what game right now is hitting the table a lot for you? Uh, we were trying to get, uh, get finished Pandemic se Legacy Season 1, because okay. we got Season 2 waiting, and, uh, we j I just got Gloomhaven, so we're okay. waiting, yeah, we're waiting to get that one played. Uh, there's so many games, I think the last couple games, times we've really played, it was, uh, Robin, Robinson Crusoe. Okay. Yeah, we, I, I played that over Skype while I was away at, uh, Rufus Sport with my friend. <laughs> I have not done that yet over the Skype. I've done uh, BoardGameArena.com a lot. Never heard of it, but I will yeah, look so into it now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool site. Basically, it just has online versions of games, and they have like a hundred different games you can play for free with people. That's, and that's so, awesome. um, so you don't need to worry about actually bringing the board. And it's a great way to test out games if you're not sure about buying them. That's the one thing in the board game industry is you know you see these games fifty, sixty bucks, and then you buy them. And then, you, and then if you don't like them, you're like, oh, man, I just spent <laughs> $60 on this, and I don't really like it. Uh, uh, yeah. Gift or something. But, yeah, it's, it's a cool way to, to check it out. Um, I play a lot of – I think the game I play the most is probably either Puerto Rico or Carcassonne on Puerto Rico. Uh, right oh, really? Yeah. 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 You, you play Carcassonne online? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. They have a – just, it, it's the newest game they have on there on Board Game Arena. Nice. And it's, it blows my mind. I don't know. Oh, I love playing awesome. I, I have to give it a shot. Board Game Arena, you said. Yes. Yep, Done. That's it. Done. Uh, have you, let's see, the new one I've played and I've kind of fell in love with is Clank, uh, the deck building game. Yeah, I've heard a lot about it. I haven't checked it out yet, but I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people I'm talking about it. I want to, I do want to check that one out. My buddy just got, um, uh, first Martians that I'm really excited to try. Yeah, I've heard um, good things about that. And yeah. another one's Terraforming Mars. I know a lot of people go crazy uh, over that one. I haven't played it myself, but that one's supposed to be pretty epic. Yes. Um, let's see. What else am I thinking of? Yeah, Clank, yeah, Clank's basically a deck builder with a board game kind of aspect to it. Because mm -hmm. um, I play a lot of the DC deck builder. Um, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so my friends and I play a lot of that. So it was kind of... It was like, oh, all right, I kind of already know what to do. And then you just add the board game element. Uh, yeah. And it was cool. Yeah, we play a lot of uh, the Dead of Winter as well. You get that okay. one on the board a lot. Yeah. With that. And then uh, lately we tried a little game. Have you played Rhino Hero? It's a little game. No, I have not played that one. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's like the opposite of Jenga. So you're building, like, stacking cards. Okay. It's like crazy eights with stacking cards. It is actually awesome. It's such a fun game. If you want like a filler game, it's really good. Okay. I'll have to say that. Uh, we just had someone just having to just turn to a nerd chat. Yes. Yes, Yeah, did. totally did. 100%. Yeah. I, I told you if you got to tune out, that's Dustin. If you got to tune out for a few minutes, that's okay. We're going to talk yeah, about Yeah, well, tell, uh, tell Dustin. You can tell Dustin to go to hell. He's one of my uh, training partners from Zuma Martial Arts. Oh, okay. and he's, 
<laughs> he's fighting this weekend, so he's just trying to get uh, chimed in. Oh, okay. Then we have another guy commenting. Ryan loves Wizards and Dragons. Yeah, that, and that's Tanner. He can go to hell, too. He knows it. <laughs> this is, these uh, are one of my old training partners as well. <laughs> uh, then we even have one of uh, James commenting again. He goes, you guys should get a PS4 or Call of Duty. Nah, uh, that's stupid. No. I like, to, I like to hang out with my friends and not play. I don't need to be insulted by kids online. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> that's right right to get insulted right to your face across the table right it's that's much. right yeah i'd rather <laughs> someone tell me that i'm a horrible person not online <laughs> um what uh so what is what would you say is your favorite board game of all time or is that too hard to dare down to just one ah uh, man like for, like for what gets on the table the most i would have to say either dead of winter or um pandemic legacy because like Pandemic Lacey, just the storyline just is um, incredible. I'm 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 always excited to play that one. And then yeah, Dead of Winter. I love Dead of Winter, and it gets to the table so much that it would have to be like number one. It's a great co-op game too. One hundred percent. I kind of just started dip my toes into the Legacy one. I got the Ninja Turtles Shadow of the Past um game which kind of is also a miniature aspect too so i guess it's kind of a miniature game mm. so obviously you take the role of playing the four ninja turtles and then someone actually gets to play the role of the villains too gets to play shredder oh that's uh, awesome the other villains and you go across 12 different stories and they have uh actual comic books that show the story as you're playing it um <laughs> that, that one i've had a lot of fun with oh so the, the that that one was a kickstarter one right yeah yep, yeah yeah uh, I, I just got the regular edition. I know some people went out and got the fancy, the works, yeah. and all the expansion right. stuff. Can't but no I was yeah. like, let me just get the base one, <laughs> you know, for the sixty bucks or whatever, and then then maybe if I want to add, because I think it was like one twenty or, or something like that. So uh, for the works or more, it, that was like ah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, oh, that's the worst thing about board games is that it's so expensive. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. All right, let's go back a couple of questions here. Uh, we have Curtis writing in, iOS or Android? Yeah, Curtis, the, the Curtis is a guy I work with. He knows it's Android. I always have Android phones. <laughs> um, let's see. We have a question for uh, from James again. He says, have you have any, got any advice for young up-and-coming fighters? Uh Everyone thinks there's a, some sort of trick to it, and it's not. It's literally just you got to go in and train every day and find a good coach that, uh, that speaks to you. Both, both of those things are, are really important. Like we have a guy at our gym, a white belt jujitsu guy. And, you know, when he first started, he was training every single day and he like would look at me like, so do you have any suggestions? And I was like, no, you're doing it. You're here every day listening to the people around, around you who are higher belts and you just, you're training. Like that's all you got to do time on the mats. Uh, we got a question from Adam. He wrote he wrote in something about a fight with a carpet. Oh yeah, so Adam's my one of my Adam's my coach, <laughs> and uh, let's say Vegas was a little rough on me. Like I think I tripped over a carpet, tripped on pavement. There was a fence around the uh, Monte Carlo that ripped my sweater. Um, <laughs> And he's like, I, I struggled with English and everything else. So he's also just being a jerk. I hate that guy. <laughs> and I hope he's having fun in Red Deer with Dustin, two of them alone in Red Deer. It's, Red Deer is not a fun place in Canada. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I typically only go to Ontario from where I'm at in Detroit. So, but I'll, I'll keep Oh, that that's right. <laughs> Um, let's see. We also have a question from Craig. Uh, when are you coming back to Scotland? Oh yeah. Uh, whenever the UFC allows it, I love Scotland. Scotland is one of my favorite places ever. And I was really excited and happy to get there. And, uh, yeah, if, whenever, if the UFC books something else in Scotland or even in the UK and I'm able to go, I'm probably going to go back up there for another little bit. Uh, we also have a question from Joe Barton. He asks, who is the greatest mm. fighter that you would say you've trained with? Oh, man. I've trained with so many good fighters. Ah, uh, that's a hard one. I don't know. A lot of, like, when I went down to Dukes, everybody down at Dukes are awesome. We're good. Like, you know, Gerald and Mike, they've been good. I don't know. 
Ah, the greatest fighter. I don't think I've ever really <laughs> Sarah. Adam Suchek said Sarah Kaufman, which I'd actually probably have to agree with. She's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I just saw that she signed a contract to fight uh, with Invicta coming up. Yes, that's how exciting is that? Um, uh, I couldn't be happier for her. Now, she's someone I've seen compete for a very long time in, in this sport, and um, I would say that this is, uh, this is a good for her, obviously, with Invicta, still going to get that exposure and a great way to kind of come back and uh, get to the UFC if, if anyone forgot what she is capable of. Yeah, I mean... And that's, and that's the thing. I think uh, people forget that she was pretty much a pioneer for women's MMA. And for a long time, she was the best, period. And in my opinion, she still is. So hopefully she can get an opportunity for, uh, for, for, for her to remind everybody that she still is. Um, let's see. We have another question. This one's from Matt. How many board games have you bought on Kickstarter? Oh, jeez. I, I think I'm up at, like, five or six right now, for sure. It's been a while. It's been a lot. Like, too many. Like, I'm embarrassed. It's been too many. <laughs> I've, had to, I've had to, like, stay away. I go on Reddit and go to the board game subreddit. I see all these people posting, hey, check out this, check out this. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Then I go, yeah. no, 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 wait. I got I to gotta push back, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not, not happening. Yeah, I know. Well, Ever since my uh, my partner was like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm like, well, Kickstarter, I'm done with you. We can't yeah. be like that. I got to save money for a kid now, so I can't spend money on board games. Uh, we have a question from Steve. He says, how could you not mention Mech and Minions? Mech versus Minions. Mech versus yeah. So that's, a, that's the, the game we've been playing a lot recently that I completely forgot. So Steve is a guy I play board games with all the time. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, all my friends are jerks and like to chime in on everything I do. But uh, Mechs versus Minions, have you heard of this game? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, so it's like one of the best, one of the best games we play. Like, so that's pretty much what put Dead of Winter back into the, the closet in a while. It was, uh, it, it's just this really awesome co-op um, programming style game. So you select cards and play it. Anyways, it's probably one of the, it's a really fun game. If, if you can spend any money on a game, buy that game. It's worth the money you get. Worth uh, what that. you pay for. For sure. Um, we also have a question, another question from Peter. Was Scotland the best atmosphere you fought in so far? Uh, yes. The Scotland crowd was amazing. Like, I th even right from the first fight, the arena was full. And it was so loud. And uh, walking out... Of my fight, even though I lost, people were like, people were giving me hugs and high fives, or just already being like how awesome that was. And then after the uh, after the fight, you know, in my in the hotel at the bar there, there was a lot of people again coming over, and just it was just, it was incredible. Like even the day before the fight, I was in the city center, and people were stopping and getting pictures with me. Like they they're really they the they enjoy the UFC. They're really excited about the um, fights that happen and they, uh, they really support it. So I have to say Scotland and Glasgow were, were, were it's probably, I would say number one so far in, in the crowd. It was amazing. Now, of course, um, for your fight against uh, GM three, that was all the way over in Nova Scotia, but um would it mean a lot to you to actually get a fight, you know, in Vancouver or somewhere closer to you uh, there in, in the western side of Canada? Um, yeah, I was supposed to fight in Vancouver. My first fight fell through against Adam Hunter, who failed his drug test. Um, so, yeah, that'd be great. I'm from the east coast of Canada originally. Like, I'm from Newfoundland. So, if you ever look okay. at a map, yeah, that's like the east, east. So, yeah, yeah. So Halifax was the closest I was going to get to fighting in Newfoundland. So that was actually a really important thing for me to do. Um, but yeah, the next one, if they ever come back to Vancouver, I 100% want to be on that card. Um, let's see. Oh, speaking of uh, the middleweight division, your division, some big news happened uh, last night breaking. GSP has decided to vacate uh, his title. Um, due, citing colitis, and now Robert Whitaker uh, becomes the actual champion. It looks like he's going to fight uh, Luke Rockhold coming up in February. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts uh, kind of on GSP and the title situation since it is your division, the, the middleweight division. 
Uh, sorry about that. Mm. One more time. I didn't catch that. Oh. I got distracted quickly. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I was wondering your thoughts on GSP vacating the title since it's your division, then obviously now Whitaker uh, becoming the actual uh, middleweight champion of fighting Luke Rockhold uh, in February. Yeah, I mean, I, that's – that's. I think, I mean, that was kind of the right thing to do. I mean, definitely if he's sick, he needed to let it go. But, uh, I mean, what was the chances of him actually staying and fighting? I mean, I wish he would because, I mean, as a Canadian, he's probably the greatest fighter ever. Um, so, so it's kind of sad that he won't get to fight at 185 again. But, I mean, it's good that he's not, you know, holding it up and Whitaker and – and Rockhold get the fight, and then, you know, we get to uh, move forward. I mean, look at what's happening with the lightweight division and whatnot with uh, Connor not fighting. It just – it starts getting backlogged. So it was it, it was good for everybody that he – instead of just being like, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm better, he just went, okay, no, I can't do it. I'll figure it out when I am better. So I think it's good for everybody. Now, looking at Luke versus Robert, how do you think that one – might play out kind of looking at a fellow fighter here yeah that's a i haven't really like as you said it just happened yesterday i haven't really thought about that one for a bit uh whitaker is a really like kind of unorthodox but powerful striker and he's been like crushing it lately i mean when you're starting to when you're taking out like yo romero and uh and jack ray you kind of got to give the guy a lot of like a lot of respect but Rockhold again is himself is a very uh athletic guy and uh and great himself I mean he's had a few little bumps but it's good that he's getting back into it I think it's going to be in a good exciting fight now I know earlier you kind of mentioned you know Michael Bisping England would be you know pretty cool for your next fight but um, I wanted to get your thoughts on Bisming obviously fought GSP, lost, and then just a few, I think like two weeks later, fought Kelvin Gastelum. Um, he now is coming out saying it probably wasn't a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, do you kind of agree with him? He, he probably shouldn't have uh, taken that fight against Kelvin? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, Bisming is such a great that he didn't really need to prove it. And he had, like, that fight with GSP was hard. You can tell, like, he got dropped a little bit. He, yeah, and then to fight a guy like uh, Gaslam, who's a, such a powerful puncher, he he didn't need to uh, he didn't need to push it at that point, you know? Like, he got to take some time off between fights and let his brain heal. I mean, poor Bisping. He didn't need that for sure. Yeah, so looking at someone like Calvin, obviously a guy who's a little smaller in the division, I think he's only 5'9", but obviously being a welterweight, a guy that moves extremely well, um, is that someone, if you ever got matched up, you'd be like, wow, this is this is kind of a weird matchup and never funny, quite a middleweight that moves quite like that before? Or have you seen other middleweights move quite like him before? You, you know, yeah, that's it. That's it. He, he's, for me, a guy like that is so small that you got to be ready. He's left-handed, so you got to be ready for that that big, um, big right Right, no big left punch, you know, his power punch. And, and, and it's just, he's so small and it's such a weird angle, and you're always punching down at him that he's going to have, most people in, in the division will struggle um, um, trying to, you know, hit him and, and take him because we were always going to punch down. He's always going to come over that shoulder. And, you know, he big puncher that when he clips you, you got to be, you know, you got to be careful of that. Absolutely. Uh, we got another question here. Uh, do you like to trash talk, uh, AK like Michael Bisbang? No, no, I'm not very good at it. If you can't tell, I'm too. <laughs> I'm too stereotypical Canadian. I mean, I love the trash talk. I think it's great, and it's it's uh, it's amazing. And people need to do it. But I just, I wish I was able to do it. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not capable. Has has any trash talk from an opponent has it ever gotten to you? Or you just kind of just take it all. Yeah, time? no, it's all it's all good. It's fun. It's funny. I like it. I don't uh, I don't take it too personal. I try not to, anyways. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I think uh, we got any more questions here. No, nah, it's just Dustin and Steven just shit talking me. <laughs> um. 
let's see. Obviously, so oh, Christmas is coming up. Um, I know you said you have a, a baby on the way, but is there anything that in particular you have on your uh, Christmas list coming up? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> no, it, it's it's really just to drink beer. That's pretty much it. That's all I want to do for Christmas. Hang out with my dog and my girl and, and, and drink my beer. That'll make me happy. Is that uh, probably similar to what your uh, New Year's plans will be as well? Yes, most likely, for sure. <laughs> 100%. Now, you said you're originally from uh, Newfoundland. Do you typically go there for the holidays, or do you, do you stay around uh, British Columbia usually? Um, it's it's 50-50. The last two years, it's been uh, staying around British Columbia. But uh, before that, it was um, it was mostly Newfoundland. But it's hard to get back to, to St. John's right now. It's so expensive to fly there, so... And we recently, the last couple of years, we bought a house. So it kind of takes away the money we would use to go back to, to St. John's. We use to, um, we use for the house. I hear that. <laughs> yeah, right. <It> is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is Ryan Janes. You can follow him on Twitter at Ryan Janes MMA. And Ryan, thanks for coming on. Uh, the thanks Friday. for having me. Talk with everybody. We really appreciate it. Look forward to your next fight. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. All right, we'll talk to you. See ya. Once again, that was Ryan James right here on the MMA World Facebook page. Please like and share the interview. And thanks to everybody that commented and wrote in and asked questions. I really appreciate it. Once again, I'm your host, Jim Graham. You can follow me on Twitter at Jim Graham. And you can also catch this on YouTube, youtube.com slash Beyond the Cage Podcast if you wanted to check out there as well. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. For Ryan James, I'm Jim Graham. See you, everybody.